for a good reason. You know, he is an absolutely phenomenal talent and he has been since Quake Champions really first existed here in the competitive space, which has already been out for a fair while, to be honest. Like what launching in like, what was it, 2017? You know, I have yeah. a memory like a sieve, but I'm sure it was around <laughs> that time frame. Uh, and Dehang has always been such an insane player that if Max is able to beat Dehang today, it's like wonderful, real good progress being made. It would be, but the hang, as you said yourself, right? One word to describe this man, I think, is consistent, right? Number Agreed. two of NA for about as far as anyone can remember, predating even Quake Champions. Now we see Chain trying to take over that spot, has beaten the hang in the past few times that they played against each other, but still, the hang clearly one of the absolute best in NA, if not the world. So Maxter has got his work cut out for him today. So just been told we should have the picks and bands ready to go and we'll have a look at what the journey is going to be. Looks like the players are already kind of in their lobby preparing for map one, which will be Awoken with the Ranger and the Strog. Veil of Nath coming out again, but a battle of the heavy hitters as we have the Keel and Scalebearer and then Deep Embrace. Always love to watch this one. I think this is becoming a, a bit of a, a fan favorite, I think, in some ways. I really like watching it. Deep Embrace with the BJ versus the Visor for Dahang this time. Yeah, indeed, we've also got a Veil of Nav and Awoken. Looks like Maxter is going to be playing the Strock, clearly taking that one out of the Hang's hands because we know how good the Hang is on those crowd sliders. He really brought Strock to the scene as a prime oh, champion yeah. in duel, right? He did. I mean, very much a, a player that, and uh, it's one of my favorite things, I think, to mention about Dehang for those that are tuning into Quake Pro League now, you know, maybe you've not actually followed Quake Champions for a long time. Dehang has always been quite the innovator with specific champions. You know, the matter what the game mode was, if he believed something worked, he would pretty much like ignore what the rest of the community thought about a champion and he would dedicate and get more results with it than anyone who would play that champion before. Strog really is, I think, that, that magic example. He'd done similar things with Clutch back in the day, uh, but Strog really is his kind of pioneering pick. But in regards to this first map, though, Flea, not being able to play the Strog, I don't think is going to be a massive hindrance because he's got Ranger and yeah. he's on Awoken, which is a really nice combination for Ranger because of just how rocket heavy this map can be. His passive helps that a lot, but mostly the orb and how scary it can be to challenge those key areas of the map. Because if he has orb ready to go and he just piles in and he has more stack than you, you have to respect it. There needs to be a lot of decision making going into anywhere to hang's going to try and pick up an item. Yeah, absolutely. It allows you to take so many of those neat little shortcuts through the hole down at heavy, through the teleporter that just gives you so much control of that center area of the map. But on the other hand, Maxter has got the raw mobility. He's got that speed using the scratch slider and of course that peeker, right? The peeker is really strong on the map that is awoken because there's so many of these neat little ledges where you can easily jump down, send the peeker right back up, just go back and review some of the hangs gameplay in the past and he will teach you a massive class on how to play that champion so i have no doubts that maxter is well aware how to play it himself and as we now ready up both players are good to go so in a few seconds we'll be jumping right into our first map thank you all so much for joining us uh, quake pro league has been you know it keeps on rolling in this online realm and players uh, i think real giving it their 100 percent a game still the fact that we're already this many weeks into stage two is kind of like, wait, what? I think I blinked and missed it, to be honest with you. But now Awoken will be our first map of the day, and it should be a good day of quick, everyone. Absolutely. We've got some great games coming up, but for the time being, let us focus on the first one as we are loading into the first map of the day. It is Awoken. We've got The Hang taking on Maxter. And my oh my, what an opener this is going to be. Strock versus Ranger, both champions with quite a bit of mobility and some offensive ability. So I think that this is going to be a brawl. Without question. It's just the way the champions kind of uh, play out here. I know it's always a bit different sometimes when you see those massive differences. Maybe it's going to be like a light versus heavy or something. But as we're both going in with similar pools, it's just going to be that absolute sheer mobility from the Strog versus the, look, I'm going to look at you and just delete nature of Ranger. And with Dahang, who I mean, we've talked about this guy's combat skill many a time. Yeah. Ranger has always been, I think, one of his kind of low key star picks because he's confident, brave, super super effective when he just needs to throw down and fight and here we go map one begins and it'll be maxter that we're checking out first kicking things off on the crouch slider of course sitting over on the lg side of the map both players immediately picking up their items and now maxter has to be careful he doesn't have a rocket he can't take those close quarter engagements just yet 
whereas the Hang is missing the LG. So both players still missing some crucial weapons in their kit and they are trying to play around that cleverly. We kind of have that classic standoff, really. I like that play from Max to actually almost using that as an opportunity to get to Hang to run near Mega just so we could pick up the rocket launcher safely. Nowhere to be seen. Unfortunately, he is rather worse for wear. Takes the tactical rocket jump and the orb. Hang on a minute. The orb, oh, da hang, able to get there just in time. But for a split second, you feel like maybe Maxter would have been able to find it. But he had to hit some pretty phenomenal rockets to get the job done. Maxter also kind of miscalculated the peaker right there, popping it out while he was still soaring through the sky, lining himself up for a very easy shot. And the hang, of course, is going to take advantage of that. But retaliating rails are coming out right now. The hang forced on the back foot. That small armor and the Mega will, of course, help him out a fair bit as Maxter is starting to build some momentum. Good rails from the Hang. Zooming in, what am I seeing? Something that the American player rarely does as he escapes by the skin of his Steve Maxter, not looking all that healthy himself either. A bit of a scary situation there. Both players pretty railable, especially the hang after getting hit by that first one. Even when he went in to get the armor, Rail would have finished him off, but had to absolutely bank on Max to not being a bit too brave and pushing forward, you know. Looking for that Rail, not going to quite hit its mark. Max's situation right now would have been that lack of armor, at least during that time. You know, we did just have heavy spawning anyway. But now, all things considered, considering that was quite a standoff, still only one frag separating the players, only one frag in general so far. Very slow placed game that might change though. Maxter getting knocked back onto the bounce pad. The hang, he smells blood. Careful not to overextend though. Very characteristic for the boys from Liquid, but he knows where his opponent is. He's just going to completely nice. ignore the peeker and orb right into that little hidey hole. Takes a lot of damage in return though. And Maxter picking up Mega off the spawn. Is he going to pressure? Oh, he oh needs two God. huge rockets. And the hang hanging on to his lead. And as he gets a perfect call out over where Max is going to try and heal up a little bit. You know, you've taken this much damage. There's a light armor down there. There's a pretty good chance I think you're going to run in and take it. And then he catches Max at the point of no return. Three frags in the lead. And that's an immediate rail to already put Max in a bit of a precarious position. They take a fight. But a fight that I don't think either one wants to dedicate too hard to. The Hang wants to protect that lead, and Maxter really does not want things to go 4-0. to zero. Opts to back out and take the Mega, and actually, in fact, allows him to get both major items. And just like that, Maxter has a footing to get something back here. The Hang going to have to resort to these lights around the map. That rail's definitely going to be a bad start. Misses the shot! Watch out for the Kamikaze! Oh! <laughs> Gets it at the very last second. Maxter, though, unable to really cement any sort of control, even though it feels like he's been in the dominant position for a while. This is because the Hang's damage output is just so sublime when it matters the most. Finally, Maxter starting to pile on some of those rails of his own, pushing in aggressively. Is he going to try and force a frag out? Nah, he knows that he's still got plenty of time to work with, and he wants to take this slow. Play a calculated game the way he has been. Two rails. Just a tickle of LG will do it right now. Maxter decides to go for Mega instead, though. The Hang is given another lifeline. And the Hang has to be extremely patient now. There's not a lot of stuff left to pick up around this part of the map. On top of the fact that Maxter is really trying to keep him on the end of a string, perhaps, using it as an opportunity to get even more stack has control so far. And the Hang seeming pretty comfortable actually playing out of control, but you know, what's going to take his one rail, kind of like that. And he's already going to put a pretty significant dent in what Maxter was able to build up. And more importantly, the fact that the Hang, he's trying to get himself in position now, right? Because we have this Mega about to spawn. Looks like Max is going to pick it up again. He will indeed. But that's not going to get him any frags for now. You know, Maxter, he has all the stack in the world. But if he can't find or hit the Hang while the Hang is constantly hitting these rails, it's not going to lead to much. The Hang's out of control play is just so good. It always has been. He just finds a way to oh, stay clear oh, oh. of his opponent, but not of those rails, though. The hit scan weapon coming out strong. Maxter, he needs to get a kill. There we go. Will finally chase down the hang, get himself a kill on the man from Liquid. And now, for the first time this matchup, we're really starting to see some solid control from one of these players. Maxter, he's got both of the items going in his favor. Good delay. 
Solid rotation, and he's starting to land those rails as well, pushing in. Can he find some more damage? Doesn't have to just yet, though. Doesn't have to overextend at this point. He can still play this slow game. Plenty of time to work with. And the important thing for him so far has been keeping the control. On top of the fact there is a significant delay between the two items, and has been for some time, we're now able to use that Pika. I like that play, you know, the intention to try and maybe get the Pika through first, just on the off chance that Max would be able to go and safely go through the teleporter without getting hit by too much damage. Trying to catch where Dahang might be now. I really like how Max has played this one, you know, he's technically behind in frags, but he looks totally, totally content. And he still has time to get the two frags that he's after. Has to show respect to that orb. You know, you'll outstack a ranger, but it takes one good orb and that will pretty significantly outdo it. Ooh. Oh no, the rockets just aren't there. Oh, dearie me, Flea, that could have been so much better than it was. He is going to beat himself up over that one. You just know that for a fact. He had such a strong run in the minutes leading up to that and then just fumbles the rockets completely, misses three shots in a row while the hang pummels on the damage. And then Maxter, just before heavy spawns, drops a crucial frag that is now giving the American a very strong opportunity to ride this one all the way to the bank. Good tribal use as well from the hang. Maxter unable to really peek or make a move on this item. Oh, solid play from the hang using that orb. We were talking about it before the match started. Catch up so many of those nifty little tricks at your disposal. And the hang, of course, knows them all. And the moment he used that die orb to go up top. Oh, not quite able to get the mega. Hang on a minute. I was going to say something about Maxta being pretty much screwed the second the orb uh, went up there. And then before I could even finish what I was thinking, Maxta comes in and is able to take the hang by surprise right before the mega gets picked up. Now, on a map like this, there is still an opportunity to make some kind of comeback here for Maxter. It's going to be tricky, you know, to hang. He's making a lot of these frags, take a fair old while to come through. A bit hard to pin down and find sometimes. Not that it's a problem right now, because Maxter looking to really catch to hang in this position. Please move out somewhere. I want to hit that rail, and I need it now. This is difficult for Maxter. Two minutes left for three frags. It's entirely possible, but the hang. He proves himself such a strong out-of-control player, especially when he's got that orb in his arsenal. Even if you do catch him, he can just turn things around with that sudden burst or damage or just escape out Ooh. of the room instantly. That was a very good rail. He needs more though, Maxter. Can he find an opportunity? Slipping through the little hole, has got to be careful! As the hang shows up behind him, lands two excellent rails and that is that heavy, immediately gone once more. Some opportunities here for Max that have presented themselves, but not quite able to get the damage that otherwise would have helped him out a lot. Oh dear, even down to things like that, which definitely was not intentional. Max, I mean, he's had the mind for this. I think just the execution has not quite been all there on this map. A couple yeah. of rare fumbles, perhaps, known for being such a solid player. Still hitting 42% railgun, by far his most used weapon. 1500 damage out of 2700 with just the rail alone but he feels or it feels to me rather that he's missing the shots when they matter the most and the hang is just not doing that even though he's got lower overall railgun accuracy he just manages to find the damage when he needs to now this Lovely is shots. the opportunity yeah that's one two three shots in a row can he add on some oh, more no. he needs to push he doesn't have the time catch up he needs to go now Indeed, and it was tricky that right as Dahang opened up this rail angle, Maxter had swapped to the rocket launcher already, so there was no kind of instant damage that could be done. And Dahang, he's going to be content just sitting up here now, you know, stick his ear to the ground, listen out. For a Maxter that at this point has to chase, has to desperately try and gather as many frags together in the time that, honestly, it doesn't feel like he has. Dahang is going to be so content now sitting this far away. Might concede a frag here. But if he just makes it take ages, 15 seconds for two frags, when you can delay as well, I mean, that's a GG right there. Dahang is going to get this first map. 
it's a shame that Maxter only really started hitting those shots towards the end of the game, right? You see him hit three, four rails in a row. If he would have done that at an earlier point in time, this could have been a very different outcome. But you said it yourself, catch up. The execution just really wasn't quite there, right? If you look at Maxter, I think the one deciding moment in this game was that push over at the top of heavy, right? He Maxter jumps from over at the railgun and then misses all of the rockets. The hang punishes him heavily, establishes control for another minute or two and at that point maxter is just trailing to the point of no return man and i'm actually looking at the items themselves there was like 15 megas and three megas for the hang like maxter actually had a significant amount of uh control over those two major items but clearly that wasn't the hang's game plan the hang's game plan was to play the you know kind of slippery and steady game and you know you point out how many times just how how good his out of control game can be and very confident while out of control you know there was a, a couple of frags where the hang seemingly got kind of caught by surprise really but uh overall content to let the strog kind of run around and pick up what he wants because he was hitting the rails he was getting the damage down and unfortunately a couple of fights that really on paper benefited maxter through stack difference alone but not able to find the damage i think that first rocket fight this fight was just not yeah. Not where it was at, and a very unfortunate beginning to the end. You can see he knows it too. That that was just where it all went wrong for Maxter. And then he wasn't able to close the gap, even when he did start landing more shots towards the end of the game. Still, I don't think that this was a bad showing by Max, right? The execution, yes, it oh, was no, yeah. lacking, but he was playing the hang, the number two in NA, one of the greatest Quake players of all time. So for Maxter to still keep it to a game that is this close, he absolutely can still secure the rest of the series. He just needs to land the shot, do the damage. The game plan was sound, and we're going to see how this translates into the next map, Veil of Nath. If I remember correctly, this is going to be a heavy brawl fest because we've got Keel being played by Maxter up against the hang on scale. Indeed. And the fact that, yo, nice hat, Keel. Anyway, uh, going into <laughs> what really was that first map, the fact that you are able to make it as close, because it was competitive all the way until the last kind of, you know, 30 seconds where that was officially okay well now there's no more time to make something happen everything besides that kind of like when the time counted to get damage that he needed which you know i mean that's kind of layer one isn't it when you're not hitting your shot so you're not getting yeah. as much damage as you should that's an e a rather easy thing to fix uh, if you can keep your head in the game anyway i know with some people the more they miss the more they'll miss later on because you just think about it don't you when it comes to things like rail but uh, i think that he was able to keep it super 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 competitive which hopefully he can keep that energy going into the next map because i mean look veil with two heavy hitters the two large champions it's going to be a, a bit of a brawl perhaps as it often is on veil but i really hope to see uh, max to maybe bring this one forward because he, he always plays well doesn't he when you see him play he yeah. always plays well you'd almost never have guessed he came from challenges you know absolutely not he deserves his spot in the quake pro league and i think he still wants to make that clear there's two more maps to be played absolutely an opportunity for him to mount the combat we've seen it many times in the quake pro league before maxter i think he can live up to the hype let's just hope that he can carry over that momentum that we saw towards the end of awoken where he actually started piling on the rails and make it happen this time around but of course the hang no dot aware of that and will be factoring that into his game plan so it looks like we're finishing up this warm-up here on the veil as it will be the hang and maxter going head to head again map two and be ready for a lot of fights <laughs> because you know, it's that nature of you get fragged but if you don't have a lot of health to survive afterwards they'll just respawn with a giant stack finish you off pretty easily we see some of the absolute largest frag counts on this map and you can probably understand why in a few minutes so far, though, no immediate bursts of aggression. Maxter doesn't have a lightning gun, doesn't have a rocket. The hang, by contrast, doesn't have a rail. Very common opener on this map. Neither player interested in just going extremely aggressively because they are lacking some vital tools. Maxter actually getting pressured really badly. Can he still get up on there on time? He will. Oh, just in time. Close call. Close call. But Maxter still without health. That's something you have to really eye up. Doesn't matter how much armor you have, but when you're this weak, all it takes is a, a little bit. But the hang, a lot more comfortable so far. Oh, surprising miss of the shot, actually. Yeah. 
Bang. Setting up a bit of a trap right there. You saw Maxter eye those two health bubbles. The hang just waiting for him to make oh! That's a lot of damage. 240 damage instantly. Maxter is gonna feel good after that one, even though the hang secured both of the major items. It is the man from the Black Hawks clan that actually secures himself what might be control. Out comes the oh. ability, though. Yeah, that damage reduction allowed the hang to flatten his opponent. Now Maxter only has a rocket launcher to get the damage done and the perfect call out from Dahang already having the LG ready to go. Just in case Maxter comes with the teleporter and he will. Yeah, so it's so easy sometimes, you, know, you just want to chase in and push someone forward but they've got an LG, they just hold the angle. You can't really move forward. Dahang, does he even use this teleporter? Trying to maybe catch another frag here. Importantly sticking in the area of Mega though as the second Dahang picks this one up, he can pretty happily go on the warpath for that heavy that's about to spawn. Five seconds away. Take the rail. Who cares? I just picked up Mega, bro. Maxter didn't quite have exact timing. Avoiding pretty much all damage with the exception of that final rail. Lands a beautiful shot. The hang. Little flustered by how that one connected. Out comes the bull rush again, and he's really been making good use of that ability, it feels like. Every time he uses the bull rush, it's almost as if he makes some kind of a gain with it. He doesn't use it defensively, hasn't popped it once to retreat, but always to pile on more pressure on his opponent. Yeah, that knock up, the fact that you don't take a lot of damage as you're using it, knock them up towards a corner or a wall where it's like, okay, well, my rocket's about to absolutely annihilate you now. Oh, able to thread the needle and pick up that armor. That's a really good situation to maybe stick around for this Mega. There's definitely going to be a power struggle for it, though, because I don't think either player wants to concede it, uh, at least up until that point where Dahang is going to do just that. I think he's going to be happy with the stack that he's working on so far. Get that little armor. And now, as the heavy is about to spawn, this is going to be that next objective. Now, if he can stop Maxter from being able to push in, but again, this is very similar to that first map where Dahang's like, I mean, you can pick it up. I don't really mind. Yeah, Dahang definitely sticking to the same kind of game plan. Maxter, though, loving that move, just standing just outside of the range of those rockets. And then Dahang probably figured that he might have left already as Maxter springs the trap. Now, Maxter from Argentina, solid control. I like how the hang is playing this heavy though. He's always there. He isn't completely disappearing off the map, but he's just setting up to see if he can do damage and maybe deny the item. Popping the bull rush as an attempt to secure it himself won't work out. Maxter, is he going to chase this one? I love that play from Maxter actually to use that rocket jump towards heavy. You know, teleport are too much of a risk. That's going to play into the hands of a scale bearer that has bull rush ready to rock. And the fact that he hit that rocket jump up there completely threw off the hang, wasn't really able to do anything. Maxter keeps a significant amount of stack difference. And now the hang on stack alone is currently on the back foot, but it's very similar to Awoken where the hang, it feels like he's just conceding this. He doesn't really mind. As long as he's able to not take too much damage himself and hit the shots in between to stop the inevitable fight from being too out of his favor, I think he's gonna be comfortable. I mean, looking at the difference alone, seven, Heavies for Maxter, two of them for Dahang. Dahang only has one extra Mega, and that's slowly starting to equalize because Maxter is taking so many of them, now five to five. It's a very respectful game that Dahang is playing so far, not, not kind of the conventional. However, there's a lot of damage here, and he can't quite survive it. Close, though. Maxter needs those health bubbles to keep himself in decent shape. A lot of damage being dealt there. Dahang made a good decision he realized that maxter was just rushing over in between the items didn't delay the mega at all or the heavy rather and thereby didn't give himself a lot of room to cycle both of them so the hang setting up well on time trying to secure the item manages to do so but the damage just wasn't quite there as the hang this time reverses the rolls get both of the items himself lg comes out from maxter but he just oh, doesn't have baby. enough to work with that was a sweet rocket for the hang as he's just extending his lead by now. But we always have to look at a map like Vale, especially with these two champions, and we look at the fact that the fight that takes place is very rarely the two lives that are here right now. You know, you're always thinking of part two flattened by the bull rush. Yeah, love to hate to see it. But on that note, 
Yeah, Dahang, he can let Max to have all of the items in the world, but if he does enough damage before going down himself, he will just spawn and refrag because he has so much stack compared to you. And if he doesn't use the ball rush, that's just going to give him an even better chance. If he spawns near Rocket, it's like, okay, let's go. Let me just make it one for one again. And just like that, you know, five to one. Dahang playing this so smart. Every single confrontation is as little damage as possible. If I go down and you're weak, I'm probably still going to pick up a frag anyway. I don't feel all that good about these last two fights that Maxter picked, though. No, he is just being too aggressive right now. His previous death, he just rushed into the room with nothing but the grenades and a railgun hoping yeah. to get the frag. Death before happened in a similar fashion, so he's got to still slow play this. Yes, time is starting to run out, but you can't just run into a heavy champion played by the likes of the Hang with just your railgun and hope you come out on top. So I really don't know about some of these decisions, but the Hang, just look at those rails. Maxer on the back foot as the Hang just massively slowing this game down, always keeping those angles at the ready. Maxter shows his face, eats a rail, has to go back to restack. This is starting to look a bit dire catch-up. I love that position that Dahang was able to set on there where he has enough audio cues to know which of the two power-ups or pickups Maxter was gonna choose, really. You know, he was had the uh, heavy in mind the second he heard it near Mega. Okay, I'm gonna stop and then try and shut you off for that again. Has been able to take down pretty much everything of Maxter left really with the scraps that remain on the map, if any. And now with five seconds, Mega's about to spawn. Even if Maxter picks that up right now, he's got to get some armor as well. It's too risky to push in for it. And he's not even going to try. Oh, and he gets fragged anyway. Man, from bad to worse, truly. Because now you've spawned with the rail. Dahang knows that all you've got there is a rail gun. So why do I really have to care about not picking up this heavy? And he's going to try and get some bonus damage first. Hit the rail, then pick up. And delay. Yeah, there was just so much indecisiveness in how Maxter played the previous minute or so. You could see him reverse course several times. He'd run up to uh -oh. a ball and then turn back around. He just doesn't know what to do. And the hang, he knows the rails on point, not zooming in as always. I really want to uh, really shout out to Hang's player cam after that frag. I think he even impressed himself. Anyway. So good, I even amazed myself, he says. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is indeed going from bad to worse. Maxter, he just looked lost for these past few minutes to hang in full control. And there were just so little resources for Maxter that he has been unable to do anything. And now, yes, he finally gets himself a frag. Mega will go his way as well. But with a minute left to go, this is pretty much over and done. Yeah, at the very least, for Maxter was able to pick up a Mega after getting that frag, but he still hasn't really had any armor. And because of that, all it takes is a little bit of rail and fresh off spawn, rail and rocket. Doesn't have the LG yet, but he might be able to push it. Now he has all the weapons that he needs to complete the demolition course, because I think now, I mean, less than a minute left, six frags. There is, in fact, not still time. That's now 30 seconds left. That's really going to be it. And the Hang has played this map so insanely well on the defensive side. You know, a, a really strong defense can put frustration into even the best players sometimes. And I think that Maxter, even when he had time to work with, I do think that frustration and almost desperation started to set in earlier than perhaps it should. Yeah. That rail, the Hang's rail, has just proven once again to be too oppressive. He was at 59% railgun accuracy just moments ago. By far his favorite weapon, and Maxter just unable to break on through. It feels like every time he made a move, the Hang was there to shut him down. And then that indecisiveness, as you said it, way too early, you could see that sense of dread setting in. And Maxter, he just kind of hung around towards the shotgun right below the teleporter exit, just not knowing what to do. He couldn't go over to Heavy because the Hang was there. There weren't any resources over on the Mega side. He was just waiting around for any sort of opportunity. And the Hang is going to demolish you for that indecisiveness. So a good game overall, but a very deserved win from the Hang. Yeah, I mean, looking at those end game stats as well, uh, it was the actual control itself eventually became... <laughs> the control itself eventually belonged to the Hang quite comfortably. But it took a while to reach that point. Uh, for a big chunk of the map, you can even see the frustration in Maxter's face, I think, here. Um, the way that Dahang was playing this, the fact that it was... He's so content to let Maxter kind of take whatever he wants. And the moment a fight happens, 
although most of the time De Hang won the fight anyway, when he didn't, he still kind of had the last laugh because he's able to refrag quite easily. Uh, and <laughs> I think that was the moment he got the 180. That was the moment he got the 180. But a well-played map all round, and Maxter uh, just, I think, really just played the game of De Hang, where De Hang, he's going to be a little bit slow and steady. He has the scale bearer, so there's, there's no rush, you know? There's no rush. Because if you want to play slow and they get even a little bit eager or overconfident or whatever the case may be, all it takes is one good rocket, one good ball rush, and it's kind of like, oh, you're dead now. I think the hangs plays over at Heavy were just so decisive. Like you said it yourself, right? The hang, he very, he very often makes this conscious decision of, hey, I'm not even really going to go for this item, but he's there and he's lurking and he's waiting for an opportunity. You're just going to jump on it. I'm going to push you off with LG. You are a second too late. Out comes the bull rush and I steal it right from underneath Whoa. your nose. So he was just so ready for everything. And Maxter, he was just outclassed completely. It feels like even though his aim seemed better than the first map, now the hang's strategy and positioning was just too much to deal with. So we're going into our final map now, the Deep Embrace. But with how the two maps have gone previously, I'm a bit concerned about the matchup purely because uh, Max is going into this with the BJ, so he's going to have all the damage. Um, but one thing he's going to lack in comparison to Dehang is just straight old fashioned information because we have the visor and uh, the piercing sight. So it's like Dehang has already been playing, I think, a bit of a smarter game here than Maxer, especially on Veil. Vale. And now, as we go into this final map, Dehang is going to have infinitely more information than you pretty much at all times. I'm kind of concerned about the comparison between the two because damage alone might not be enough to really take to hang off of this momentum that he's built up across two maps. This indeed does feel like a recipe for disaster after this previous map, right? Everything that went wrong for Maxter on Veil, it feels like it could easily be amplified this time around. Yes, he's got that burst damage. Earlier on, he had the grenades. Now he has a dual wield, but the Hang has got the information with that piercing sight. And he was so good, so calm and collected on Veil that I imagine that we will go see the same thing again, especially now that he's gotten the railgun start as well. As we now begin checking things out once more from Max's point of view. But it is how do you deal with someone who is already playing incredibly, incredibly smart and now they have this piercing sight. In that case, springing the perfect trap. I mean, in the right course too. De Hang's in the middle of trying to go towards heavy. Really a point of no return because you're stuck in the air with two lightning guns juggling you. A perfect start for Maxter. Indeed, that couldn't have gone any better, but Maxter still lacking the railgun, even though he got the frag, has been unable to secure the weapon, now he's caught in a bad position. He wants the rail, it is such an instrumental weapon on this map. Loving the damage he's doing, though almost sends the hang flying off the map, giving him a little speed boost, but now Maxter so much on the back foot, tries to double back, but the hang is there waiting for him. And now things are all tied up. Mega spawning in a few seconds. The Hang is going to take advantage of this. We'll secure both for the first time this map. This is not looking good for Maxter. That, en that entire exchange while well, Maxter has been critically out of important weapons because all he really had there was machine gun and shotgun. In that specific circumstance though, neither of which are really going to cut it compared to what the Hang was able to pump out there. And now the next fight taking place near the heavy. The right idea to sit here and keep a look at the teleport. Oh, off you go! <laughs> See ya later! And it's just in time for the heavy to spawn. Sand flying backwards, spiraling off the map. Maxter, he's going to be happy with that one. Doesn't have an LG though. Ooh. Nice rail. Can he apply pressure? Can he secure himself? One more frag. He's got the high ground. We all know what that means. Don't try Dang. it. Yeah, the Hang's got a lot of resources available to him down below. I really do question Maxter's decisions to just leave up so many of those weapons, right? He had a shot at getting LG. It might have resulted in him giving up heavy, but instead he makes a move about oh, the weapons revenge! he needs. Yeah, what goes around comes around as the Hang replaces his opponent in kind. And he had a, a gun in each hand, so he's not even able to grab the ledge or stop himself from falling off. Poor guy. However, De Hang taking a lead now, but really important to note, he finally has all of the weapons that he needs. A lot of this map, neither player has kind of had that unholy trinity ready to go, and it has played a big part into some of these fights, or lack of in some cases, not quite being able to push forward. Now, Maxter, no armor, but thankfully, 
Not really too out there for Dahang. Takes the Mega away, so at the very least, Dahang's not going to get it, but they trade rails. And now with Dahang having armor, that's going to be really good for him if he can pick up any of those light healths around, as Maxter picks up a little bit for himself. And this is a bit of a tender fight taking place. We're starting to pick up the scraps on the map. It's all we have for now. Uh-oh, piercing sight. Ooh, looking for the cheeky shots. Dual tribalt. Not a click, common click. sight in the Quake Pro League. Yeah, he messed up the jump. He messed up the jump. Oh, God. That, that jump, I, I, I was watching from Maxter's point of view. He messed up the jump over to the heavy. Had to retry, but by that point it was already too late and the hang secured the item. He just completely lost the item and a frag because of that little movement fumble. Coming back strong though, secures Mega instantly pushing his opponent. Knows that the hang doesn't have a railgun, so Maxter can now deny that long distance weapon for That's... the first time. Oh no! Again! Oh, oh my like, god. Okay, so. We're used to seeing ring outs on these kind of maps, but I don't think this many. We almost got another one. If that pillar wasn't there, we would have seen another one. Unfortunately, what those ring outs do, you know, from a viewer's perspective, it's a always a bit of a bonus moment. Yeah, it can be quite funny and, and whatever it is, but as a player, that can be so disastrous. You, know, you build up a, a massive lead. You might have like an outstack the opponent by God knows how much. And all it takes is like one ring out and all of that momentum, no matter how much minutes it took to build, is gone. Sink error adding another notch to his belt after that one. We've almost got one ring out per minute. Oh, hang on there, Maxter. That was, uh, <laughs> Maxter almost just straight up walked off the map. What right we're calling there. that, RPM? Ring out per minute? Yeah. <laughs> ring out per minute, yeah. Every map so needs to have a different RPM, man. Just statistically, someone number crunch, give us the stats. Maxter, Ooh, this time around, does make the jump and secures the heavy for his trouble. He's still got plenty of time, though. We're only halfway through this map. Could totally still do this, but these rails, the defensive shots from the hang! Maxter overextends, jumping yeah. carelessly onto the mega. It was a, making those mistakes a really bad situation for Maxter to be in because you know that rail, the defensive piercing sight being used, A, really smart from uh, De Hang because when you're on the back foot and someone's chasing you down, their movement to chase might become, oh, nice rail, that movement might become quite predictable uh, because they really, really, really want to chase you down, right, and get that damage. If you have piercing sight, the defensive rails become so much better. BJ goes, ah, uh, and then you know exactly how weak he is. <laughs> he pushes forward and it's, you're done. There's no way De Hang wasn't going to be ready for that angle. Heavy machine Ooh. gun, yeah, doing quite a bit of damage. But Maxter with the dual rail, not something we've seen quite often. Toxic was one of the few players who dared even attempt that. Now we get to see Maxter pull it off as well. One point of health. He knows that the hang is coming for him. Can he escape? Can he make it out? He does find some resources to work with. But Mega is still not up for quite some time. Looks like Maxter will survive this one though. Such a close engagement. Oh no, the awareness. Map awareness kind of oh, failed him there. The hang had the rail ready, but he knew he didn't have a lot of time to get it. So he's not quite able to find the shot, but he had the right idea. Now the hang still in the lead. As Maxter picks up all of these health bubbles and the Mega to stay alive. Wait a minute. <laughs> BJ, he's alive, but my God, is he screaming. Never ending. The hang constantly putting him at death's door, but out armored all the time, Flea. There's no armor. Looks like he'll even miss out on Mega this time around. Once again, the dual wheel tribalt won't really get him any results, though. He was just too worried about peeking. You know he wanted to do more, but he knew that if I show my face in the Hang Lancer rail, I'm down to nothing, which is exactly what happens now. And the Hang, going back to that battle plan we've seen so much of today, he's just going to leave the heavy, it seems like. Oh, looks like Maxter isn't even going to secure it, probably for the best, but lingers around a bit too long, and now the hang starting to build more and more momentum catch up. This is not yeah. looking good from the player from Argentina. It almost looked a little bit like Maxter didn't quite have the timing on it, because surely if the plan was to not go for the heavy, he wouldn't have been there at the time of it spawning, so the hang can just easily find that shot. It's a bit of a bad situation now as the hang much more healthy. Has been hitting a lot more of those kind of clutch rails. That rail on its own would have been pretty disgusting. 
And now as Mega spawns, Max has to make another hard decision. Do I even risk going for it? Is it even going to be my choice now? Because as it spawns, there's no way I can beat Dahang to it. And now I go down, Dahang picks up the Mega. Things are going to go from bad to worse. Two minutes on the clock to get five frags. The piercing sight's just been used as well. So he knows you've spawned and all you're going to have there is a railgun. Why do I have to give a damn about that? The hang definitely making liberal use of that ability, constantly getting himself all the information he needs and Maxter. Even though we've seen some really good shots Ooh. from Blackhawks player, it just hasn't amounted too much. The hang holds his ground, rockets into LG. And I think that at this point, all hope is lost. The hang looking set to take this one home in a clean victory once more. Both of the items are going to be spawning any minute. Oh, even Visor says there is no hope for you. Absolute rudeness. Rudeness. But he's right. There is no hope to come back from this map the way things have gone. Dahang continuing to play with absolute intensity. Very common of the players from Liquid to do so. And one minute for an impossible task. Maxter, he played well today, but Dahang just played exceptional, I think. Indeed, Dahang. The game plan that we've seen time and time again, he is not the kind of person to just blindly chase his opponent or fight for every single opportunity that he's given. He is so perfectly fine with giving up control, knowing very well that he is so capable of playing a passive defensive playstyle and just working his way right back into it. And that's exactly what happened today as well. I think on all three maps, Maxter just got outclassed the aim wasn't quite there it feels like but the strategy definitely favored the hang as well and now 20 seconds of uh, forced reflection i think really for maxter as this is going to be the end of things he always was going to have a tough opponent here in De hang and De hang one of the most dangerous players in the world right now and i think that maxter he gave it a good go and i do think still continuing to show that he is just he's just a rock solid player uh, and I think he's um, got a lot of promise going into the rest of this stage. Shame he didn't get a map. And there were a couple of instances where he definitely, I think, could have taken a map there and made things a little bit more even uh, in the way things work for Season 2 of Quake Pro League. Every map counts. There really is no, oh, I've lost the set, so uh, we'll go you know, so-so for the rest of the, the set. That's not how it works here. Uh, and I think that Maxter, he had moments of promise, just didn't feel like it was his day today, you know? Yeah, there were definitely a few opportunities where it felt like the tides <laughs> could have changed completely. There were several opportunities for Maxter where a comeback felt so within reach, but then something went wrong, whether it was a ring out, whether it was him missing those rockets on Awoken, whether it was just <laughs> not landing a single rail for a minute on end. Maxter just falling just short of greatness. But as you said, he's got a lot of potential. The man is still relatively new to the Quake Pro League. We've seen what this constant practice and pressure can do to players to close the gap with the best in the world. So I think that we haven't seen the end of Maxter at all. Definitely not. And the fact that there's still so many weeks of the stage to go, there's plenty more Quake and Maxter where that came from. But that was only our first series of the day. But we're going to continue this absolute continuation of uh, the Americas matches. Did I just say continue the continuation? Whatever. That's a sentence <laughs> I now just invented if it didn't exist before. Um, but it's been a strong day so far. Let me just bring up ye old schedule. Effortless and Dewey is going to be our next matchup. And I'd like to see Dewey kind of start to do a little bit better. You know, he's had a little bit of a rough road so far. Indeed, Dewey not quite looking all that strong so far. I don't think he's won a series yet during this stage. Now, there's been these really promising moments in the past, right? Where Dewey, his playstyle is just so different from just about anyone else in NA, if not the world. The only person who really comes close is base. So he can really throw you a curveball. But so far in this stage, that hasn't happened yet. So on that note, we are going to cut to a quick break. So thank you so much for joining us so far, whether it's morning, evening, wherever you are on the world. Thank Thanks for spending your day with us here for Quake Pro League and we go into our second series. After this short break, we will be right back. <laughs> 